All right, welcome back to another video. Through all this chaos, I'm still managing, trying to anyways, make videos. Haven't made one in a while, so I'll get you all updated on what's going on. Uh, start with the maple syrup stuff. So this tank was put in a couple, about a week ago now. Been trying to find a fitting to bring this two and a half uh, Acme thread uh, outlet down to a one inch uh, steel or stainless steel barb we ended up finding a piece of stainless we had some arc uh, we had some stainless rods for the arc welder and my dad put that together this morning so we could slide this over and uh, get it from the tank down to the evaporator you can hear quiet if you can hear if you listen you can hear it's running pretty good uh, we need a step here first but we have connected the line and we've gone through it and taken out most of the droops but there's still it's pretty high coming up here so um, it really has to back I don't know it kind of has to build up and then it kind of pushes it through anyways so that part is complete. The trees, the sap from the trees is being stored. Everything's tapped. So that problem from here on is solved. Next problem was the bricking the evaporator. Uh, we ran into a problem because these bricks are too thick and our insulation is too thick. It brings it out almost, almost, well, almost three inches or two and a bit on each side so the brick would actually hit on the side of the flute here so um we got smaller ones now smaller bricks went back to merkley's and got some proper bricks we got the powder the mix um so this is all done you just got to do the sides and uh we got a proper What's the matter, girl? What are you barking at? Anyways, we got the uh, dog with us here, but I got the uh, cutoff disc for cutting this brick. Unfortunately, it's a corded. It's a corded grinder, so we gotta go and get the big generator to run this tiny little grinder. I was considering going to go buy a, a battery grinder because we really need one. But I just don't really got the time to do it right now. So we got the big 185 Lincoln generator welder. We're going to have to use it anyways uh, to get a, to run the vacuum pump. I'm going to go tomorrow probably and look at a vacuum pump for this system here. Um, pretty big vacuum system and you know how maple syrup stuff is everything is so expensive uh, and because we're out in the bush we have no hydro so we have to convert everything to gas power or run it off a generator so um, this vacuum pump I found for $1,500 and it is a 65 CFM so it's just massive way way bigger than i ever ever could dream of or could ever buy so we're talking 65 cfm um, at whatever mercury unit 15 or some i don't know what the fuck the, the measurement is but it's it's a big vacuum system um he says it was good for like 10,000 taps we only have 350 <laughs> so it's gonna be huge but it's a 240 uh, motor, electric motor. So we need a fairly big uh, generator. Our generator uh, has 240 or has 220 or, no, it has 250, ah, I don't know. It probably has 240. So we'll be able to run that with that generator, no problem. It's just the, uh, it's just a good deal. Like uh, you can't really find vacuum pumps uh, for that kind of money, for $1,500, so that's why I don't care how big it is, as long as it's big enough, 
which is more than enough. So we're gonna head back home. Get the generator up here for that little grinder, <laughs> and uh, we'll try to get something done today. All right, so this is our 185 out back Lincoln welder generator. So this should, uh, oh yeah, we got 240. So this should be plenty to run. That uh, 65 CFM, 240, uh, 240 volt uh, vacuum pump. But for now, it's just gonna be running a little grinder. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we had to empty the entire, well, whatever sap we had in that tank, we had to let it out because you had to bring that valve in to get it welded. So we lost about 400 gallons of sap, which is kind of a bummer, but whoop you do right? I mean, we gotta get going anyways. So there'll be many, many liters to boil after anyways. I bought this thing new and I could not get this propane burner going for the life of me. I don't know why, but she just don't go. All right, let's quit chit chatting and get going here. Safety gear. All right, mixing up some mortar. Safe to say, it's uh, a little uh, uh, liquidy. <laughs> and a little more powder. I look so far everywhere to try to find high temperature brick mortar powder form. And it was so hard to find. I actually had a friend that referred me to Merkley's in Ottawa. Of course, the brick store that sells everything doesn't advertise very well. You know, if I could find this at Home Depot, you know, it wouldn't have been such a big deal, but it's a very specialty kind of thing. For some reason, they don't sell at the big box stores. So you gotta know somebody. Ah, 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 ah. What's going on here? Okay. D Walt's like to cut out on us. Try a lower gear. Ah, two bars. What's going on, dude? Thicker. Yeah, still, still a little, little thin. Yeah. So we'll get this all done. Okay, so I've been pretty busy. Um, I gotta say that blade really paid for itself. I ran out of. Okay, if you're a brick. <laughs> Yeah, discretion <laughs> if you are a uh a, a mason like a, a bricklayer or <laughs> have any uh skill um yeah if <laughs> if you do good work <laughs> now how do i want to say this if you're like a perfect yeah if you're a perfectionist don't look at this <laughs> uh i'm not a bricklayer i'm terrible at this um uh, so i'll show you quickly that looks not so bad. There's no mortar in between there. But the rest is just crap. Um, yeah. We ran out of half bricks. So I'm literally splitting big bricks in half. 
But then I can't split right through it, so I gotta cut it down this way. So I'm basically quartering them. It makes these little, little pieces. Actually pretty nice to work with. But this is a horrific, terrible job, and I hate doing it, and I can't wait till it's done. So let's just get it done. All right, it's uh, 20 to seven. Been at this all day, pretty much. And I'm done. It fits. I have to go in and cut one of the bricks at an angle. And I put all the rest of the mortar on top. And put some in the back here too. Everything clears by a hair. Now I just have to figure out how the rest works, how the finishing pans work. And then we gotta put our chimney up and we gotta clean up this mess. Now anyways, we're done for today. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow I'll either go uh, go get that vacuum pump or put up the chimney here, but I don't know exactly what to do yet. So kind of getting excited too, so we'll see. All right, welcome back to another video. Uh, we drove four hours yesterday, or about eight hours. No, maybe six hours. Yeah, we drove about six hours yesterday. Go pick up this vacuum pump. It's a five horsepower, 65 CFM, apparently. Um, for our maple syrup production. So this will be drawing the sap through the, the line uh, so that if we have a little dip or something, we don't have to rely on gravity. This is our better than gravity machine. This is the, the where the sap comes into um, because when the sap comes out of the vacuum line, um, and once it goes into the tank, it's not a vacuum anymore. So you're going to be losing vacuum by putting the liquid into the tank, right? So you have to have some sort of switch or barrier between vacuum and non-vacuum. So this is essentially what it is. It makes the vacuum. And somehow, I haven't figured out yet, but I think we might have to uh, somehow pump it from here into the tank. Uh, there's different styles like dump tanks or whatever they're called i'm not too sure about it but we're not gonna work too much on this we're just gonna uh i gotta put a switch on it uh so we're spinning the right way we gotta go uh, clockwise so we're putting a switch on that and then we're gonna have uh our 185 blinking generator powering this hopefully it does it it is a pretty big motor um, it's five horse, 60 hertz. Um, what else can I tell you about it? I don't know. It's pretty big. 1740 RPM, 208, 230 volt, 24 amp, 16 hertz. So I don't know if our welder generator can do it, but we're going to try it once we have that plug on. But uh, for today... We're going to focus more on putting the chimney and getting the steam smoke and steam chimney installed along with the hood so we can fire up the evaporator and see if I did a good job with the bricking and everything. So I don't think the sap will run today. It's a little bit cold. It didn't run yesterday, but a couple days ago my neighbor was boiling. So. We had a fair bit collected too. We had about 400 gallons of sap in the tank we had to collect it, but we ended up having just to dump it all because we were working on the valve at the bottom. We have like a, uh, like a T valve or like a plunger valve off the, the bulk tank. And we needed to convert it from two and a half inch to one inch just so we could empty it into the evaporator. So we had to end up taking the valve off, dumping all the sap and then welding some stuff together and now we're ready to fill it up again so hopefully we won't have to dump it again all right we're in the 6010 this tractor has made it back to the farm and uh we got the generator up front we're just gonna go up to the sugar cabane we need this generator once again for a 12 volt uh something a 12 volt could have solved 12 volt battery anyways 
our uh, salsa that we have is corded, so we have to bring the generator with us, unfortunately, but how it is. It's kind of a pain, but we're gonna be uh, cutting the pole for the chimney, hopefully today. That's here, so we're gonna give that a go. I'm also looking for uh, some slab. So uh, sawmills usually have slab when they cut, when they, they do have slab when they cut their logs. It's always the, the top of the log and the off cuts and all the odd cuts. They usually throw it out. So I know a couple of guys who got a sawmill and I'm trying to organize to get a load of slab wood because usually it's uh, soft wood and it's usually already dry. So. Hopefully I can get that, then I can not have to worry about wood after that. But it's just getting it here for the right price. A lot of it has to get dug out because it's been snowed on all winter, so. Yeah, hopefully we can get us, get ourselves some of that, but uh, for now we'll focus on this. Got the super crane in, putting on the last two sections of exhaust with the cap. It's pretty high, but with this pole, it makes it pretty easy. You recognize that pole from snow removal. So we couldn't quite. Uh, couldn't quite lift that last two sections on top. Uh, we gotta work now. So we're just gonna ratchet strap uh, last two sections. Oh, it looks like some. Oh no, we got the baler twine out. Oh boy. Yeah, he's got baler twine out. This is gonna get sketchy. Okay, so we couldn't reach the top with this setup. So now we're gonna try to tighten. We kind of tried to bend the pole a little bit with pressure, then we're gonna try to <laughs> tighten this. Jesus, fuck, I got rid of you for half the day. Yeah. Hey, fucker. <laughs> I didn't punch out, so. Yeah, I'm... right. So we're I gonna try out, to. So I just left it like that. Dad wants to bring the grain auger in to try to. Yeah, that would fucking do it. <laughs> 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 no, Our giant smokestack is up. It's quite the chore. We managed to get enough reach out of this. Once we put a binder on that and tighten it up. Now we're just putting wires uh, from corner to corner to brace it so that she doesn't fall over in a windstorm. So we got one wire here, it's hard to see. We got another one the other side. We're gonna have uh, one in the front here. But that thing is high up there. About 40 feet. Yeah, about. About 40 feet, that stack? It's 5 foot the section. Okay. 10, 15 out of the roof. 15 over the roof. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so maybe 25. Half of what I said. Gotta exaggerate though. We're just missing a wire to close the lid. We forgot to put that. We got one to open it though. And we still gotta get that ratchet strap off somehow. Might just burn it off. We got a ladder in the bucket. Get the strap off. You survive. Oh. Huh? Go down? Down? Okay, attempt number 
to get the ratchet strap down. Besides a big mess to clean up, we've made some pretty good progress. We put the hood on top just to get an idea of what it's going to be like. And we've been running through all the fittings here. And we have discovered we have an automatic draw. This is a solenoid with a valve inside. And it connects to this computer here. And it, it draws off from this side the sap or the maple syrup once it's done. So it, it, it comes out of there, goes into the next pan, and then goes into the next pan. We have four pans, two sets, and then, uh, yeah. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's uh, been a while, been a, been a long time since I've been meaning to get this all sorted out. So tomorrow we're gonna put in the uh, steam steam pipe we actually had to flip this whole pan around because this pipe or this outlet is not quite in the middle it's a little bit offset so it's perfectly fitting between the beam luckily uh dad's just leaving with the pole that worked real good once we had the binder on it but this here's the float um this is where the sap comes in it's on this aluminum or this stainless box float and that allows uh, the flow or the level of sap running in to stay consistent as it evaporates it'll go down and it'll feed more so it's we don't have to screw around with the level too much it's always kind of automatic coming from the tank there it was running pretty good today um, once you have the vacuum pump on there you'll be even better so yeah I'm pretty stoked with this we'll have to make a fire tomorrow get her going anyways thanks everybody for watching uh haven't made videos in a while but i'm glad that i'm back at it and uh we're getting some stuff done so until next time